See, what, what just, let me just answer the whole civil war for the kids here. Okay? Here's the answer of the whole civil war right here. The North, from the beginning of the civil war, from the first shot fired, the North was in a better place. They just were. They were in a better place. Why? They had more manpower and they had much more industrial strength. It's that simple. It, that's, that's the one part of the lost cause theory that is actually correct. The, the one part, if you know what that is, but I won't get into that. But the point is, they had more manpower and they had more industrial strength. There's 22 million people, give or take, in the North, and there was 9 million people in the South. The South was agrarian. They didn't have the factories and the steel and all the, the mills and all these different things. And the North was industrial. They had factories and they, had, they could produce materials and they could produce men. and I mean, that's what it comes down to. Look, if you're playing chess, guys, if you're playing chess and you've got seven pieces left and the other guy has, you know, ten pieces left, you can't trade piece for piece. You can't go bishop for bishop or even bishop for knight or whatever. You can't do it. You're, it's a losing, it's a losing proposition. So Lee had to invade. That's why he invaded. I'm not saying he was wrong for invading. He had, he was for, see, he was forced out of his place. He had to get asymmetric about it. He couldn't just go and, and trade soldier for soldier. He had to go up north. He tried to, had to, he had to demoralize the north. He had to try to remove their political will to fight. He had to try to win some asymmetric vic victories in order to have a chance. He knew this, and that's why he invaded. But, I mean, if he didn't, they could just, the North could just sit back, rearm, refit, reman, and they could just strike at will whenever they wanted. He could not allow that to happen. Trading blows was not going to work for the South. So he had to invade. Let's go back to Gettysburg. More specifically, Lee found himself in a position at Gettysburg. He had about 70,000 soldiers. The Union had about 90,000 soldiers. But that wasn't really the, the deciding factor. Meade's Army of the Potomac was in the right place. They were in the hills surrounding this lowlands where Lee's army was. They literally had, they literally had the best ground to fight from. Why in the world, since they had the best ground, why in the world would they go down to fight? And they didn't. They didn't go down to fight. They didn't have to. And applying that to our sermon tonight, let me just say this. If you have the vision and you know where you are supposed to be in your life, you know the place, and then you went to that place, and you are now standing in that place. Don't miss this. When you have the moral high ground in your life, you don't need to fight. When you know you're on the right side, in the right place, people will come, they'll have to come fight you. You don't have to, and the answer, the answer is, let them come. If you have the moral high ground, if you have that biblical vision of where you are supposed to be, let them come. So what did the Union do? They sat on the hills. They sat on the ridge. And Lee, on the third day of the, the bloodiest battle in American history, he marched his army across over a mile of open ground under heavy cannon fire and eventually musket fire. They had to crawl over a fence, crawl over a rock wall. By the time they got to the Union position that was heavily fortified in the right place, they had suffered 50% casualties. And Meade, Meade, this was the famous Pickett's Charge. And Meade was so smart. The commanding Union general was so smart that even after he had successfully defeated these 12,000 men that marched across this field, he would not send the Union soldiers back down into the same field that the Confederates came from to chase them. And you know the reason why? He's like, I'm in the right place. Why would I leave? Why would I put myself in the same position that Lee just put his army in? Where cannons can reach us. 
and gunfire from the trees can reach us. He's like, I'm in the right place. So what's the lesson? If you're in the right spot, stay there. That's the lesson. If you're in the right spot, you can't be defeated. That's what God is saying in 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. The enemy will come to you, but you will be able to win if you stay where you are supposed to be. You see, Israel was in the right spot. But then they turned on God. They turned to false gods. They, they turned to wickedness. Hosea chapter 9, Deuteronomy chapter number 28 basically says God will remove them if they do this, is what God warned, you know, hundreds of years before they even found themselves in this position where they're about to be judged or they're being warned of this coming judgment in Hosea chapter number 9. But really, they had the strength to resist it all because they were in the right spot already. They had given all, been given all the tools from their fathers, all the warnings from their fathers. They were in the right spot. So really when it comes down to it, they removed themselves. We have, in our Christian lives, we have the support to stay in the right place. We have the vision to know where it is. We have the diligence to to get there, and we have the support to stay. God is saying, you can resist the devil. If you get in that church, get in that Christian life, get in that, you know, that discipleship that you're supposed to be in in your life, you can do it. We have the power to remain where God wants us once we are there. This goes for everything. This goes for your goals in your life. This goes for the goals for your children, for your wife, for your marriage. But the bottom line is, if we decide to come out of the hills and go down into the valley, go down into Egypt or go down wherever other people are, even to go down to, to fight, why would you ever do that when you have the good ground, and you are where you are supposed to be. There's no reason for it. Absolutely no reason at all. If we come out of the hills in our Christian life, it's not because God didn't give us something that we needed. It's because we removed ourselves. That's the lesson here. That's the game theory, using this example of the Civil War, applying it to Hosea chapter 9, and applying it to our life. Just be smart. I mean, you don't even really have to be that smart. You just have to listen to what the Bible is warning us about. Don't remove ourselves. We have it. We know where it is. We're there. Just, we have the power to resist. It won't last forever. If you're under some kind of temptation, God says, he'll make a way. I mean, do you think that's a joke when God says, like, you know, I'll make a way for you to escape? Maybe, maybe look for that way to escape instead of looking for a path down the hill. That's the problem. That's why Christians get in situations where they fall to something stupid that's been common to man because they weren't looking for the escape route that was right there. They were looking at the, at the path down the hill to the valley to get mixed up in some brawl or get mixed up in some sin or get you know, mixed up in something that's going to make them leave where they are. Stay where you are. Because if we come out of the hills, it was us that took ourselves out. Let's bow our heads and have a word.